Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me on another rail fan trip. Today we're going to finish a video I actually started shooting months ago. We're heading south on the CSX CC sub from Cincinnati to Corbin. We'll stop in several places, some of which for the first time, and we'll get an update on a few others. I'd been trying to chase Q541 for a while. It originates at Queensgate Yard and heads south to Rice Yard in Waycross, Georgia. It's one of the few trains routed over the CC sub. Most traffic uses the LCL to Louisville and then heads south because of height restrictions on the line. These are excess height detectors in Latonia to warn of any cargo that might not clear the Grants Bend tunnels at Lambs Ferry. I was doing my usual signal check at CT Junction and listening to the radio. For anyone not familiar, this is southeast of the Queensgate Yard and everything heading into Kentucky on CSX will cross this point. I got a pretty early start, but still hadn't heard anything about Q541. I was hoping it hadn't already left. When I saw the signals, it was a double dose of good news. I believe we have an approach medium and a slow clear. I then heard Q575 getting ready to head south. That accounts for one of the signals, but what about the other? It sounded like 575 was already on the move, so I decided to get set up next to the CNO Railroad Bridge just down the ways. A few minutes later, and here it comes. We'll follow as it makes its way into Covington, Kentucky across the Ohio River. As long as I can remember, this bridge has been a combination of silver and rust. But I did find this picture, taken by David Arazi, and you can see the black paint seems to be in pretty good shape. We can see an interesting lash up, Penn Central and Ellen and Power up front. The picture didn't have a date, but you can see that there's no Clay Wade Bailey Bridge next to it. That means it's before 1974, but after the Pennsylvania Railroad New York Central merger in 1968. Our final clue comes in the background, where we can see what looks to be a completed riverfront stadium, home of the Bengals and the Reds for 30 years. It was opened in 1970, so this picture was taken between 1970 and 1974. Back to the train. I tried to get a look at the signal aspect here, but no matter how much I zoomed in, I just couldn't make out what it was. I didn't stick around to see the second train cross the bridge, but I would come across 575 stopped further south in Latonia at the LCL subdivision. At this point, there'd still been nothing from Q541 or the second train.
I figured, what the heck, I'll head south and see if the signals in Latonia have anything better to say. That's where I came across 575 waiting on the number two track with a stop signal, while the number one had a slow clear for whatever was coming to turn onto the LCL subdivision and head toward Louisville. I'm guessing 575 was waiting for another manifest to head south. After driving around a bit, this is what 575 was waiting for. I didn't catch the symbol, but I did find it surprising that such a large train would be forced to wait for what appeared to be a local. Q575 didn't have to wait long. As soon as this local cleared the block, he was given an approach signal and allowed to head south on the tail of that previous train. While all this was happening, I finally heard Q541 on the radio. I got something to eat and then checked the signals at Spring Lake. Sure enough, we've got a medium clear. This is the signal at the southern end of the former Ellen and DeCourcy yard. It's north of the tunnels at Grant's Bend. I decided that's where I wanted to catch Q541 first. I know I have some time, so I send the drone out to look around. The first thing I notice is the track condition. The last time I was here several months ago, I noticed that the number one track had a significant amount of rust on it, while the number two, it was nice and shiny. Now it's the opposite. The number one is clean and shiny, while the number two is getting a layer of rust on it. I'm told tunnel number two is drainage issues, and just about everything now is going through number one. While I was investigating with the drone, I also noticed the 10 mile an hour speed limit that had been in place for the number one track has now been upgraded. Both tracks are now 25 miles an hour through the tunnels. I hear a horn off in the distance and know the train is getting close. We spot it as it enters the tunnel. Built in 1853 and 1912, the Grants Bend Railroad Tunnels have been in use for well over a century. I hope you don't mind, we're going to take several looks at the engine as it comes out of the tunnel. I couldn't find which tunnel was built first, but the tunnel built in 1853, which I think is the track on the right because it's not as tall, is the oldest piece of major transit infrastructure in the greater Cincinnati area. It predates the Roebling Suspension Bridge by 12 years. I always enjoy this spot, even if it's not very good for parking or filming. This massive train finishes out of the tunnel with the DPU unit bringing up the rear.
The last time I made this trip, I drove all the way to Paris and ended up waiting more than an hour for 541 to get there. This time, we're going to stop at Falmouth. I get set up and didn't have to wait too long. Q541 South, clear, Hayes. Next to the tracks, there's plenty of maintenance away equipment here. Either they just finished a tire replacement project or they're getting ready to start one. I've heard several reports of CSX putting a lot of money into the line. And from what I'm seeing, that certainly seems to be the case. I often wonder what crews think when they see a rail fan like me just chasing an ordinary train, especially one without a heritage unit or some special cargo. I always wave and try to stay back so hopefully they don't mind. Now that the train's cleared, we'll take just a quick look at that maintenance of way equipment. Now on to Cynthiana. This town is home of the famous University of Kentucky basketball coach, Joe B. Hall. It's also where the creator of the Walking Dead series is from. And if you've ever used a post-it note, they're made here. We don't have to wait long before the train makes its way into view. The track seems to split the town in half. Luckily, Q541 seems to be going pretty fast. Q541 South, clear, killer. Q1 South, clear. Clicking. Q541 South, clear, killer. As we watch it head out of view, we'll try to beat it to Paris.
Once again, we're ready and waiting for this train. It has a clear signal. There's a wide open parking lot catty corner to the trackside cafe. The boys wanted to eat there, but haven't made the time yet. There we have Q541 rounding the bend. We'll follow a bit as it goes past the Trans-Kentucky Transportation Railroad. Can't tell if anything has changed here or not since the last time I was in the area. the first time though I'm noticing this turntable and partial roundhouse. Hopefully someday TTI or someone else will reopen the line from here to Maysville. Well, I've still got some daylight left, so I'm going to head down to Ford on the Kentucky River. I wanted to try a new spot on the other side of the tunnels, but wanted to make sure I hadn't missed Q541. So I go to my usual spot and check the signals. We can see the southbound signal is not lit up on the number two track, and the number one track is showing all red. I sent the drone to check out the northbound signal on the other end. It's not lit up either. From what I know about these approach lit signals, this means that there's something in the block on the number one track. Nothing south of here heading north or anything on the block on the number two track. I waited around until it got too dark to see and never saw a change in the signal. I'm going to call it a night, but there is a second half of this video that keeps going south all the way to CSX's yard in Corbin. A link will be in the description. As always, thanks for watching, and feel free to comment on your favorite spots to rail fan, especially if they're between Ford and Corbin. That's on my list of places to stop in a future trip. Well, I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.